The war is a terrible thing, and medieval war is not an exception. Even in 14th, 15th century, during the period considered as peak of chivalry, war turns into raids, ambushes, devastation, and looted the last piece of peasant's bread. The bright example is part of a 100-year war for Brittany, when two French noble families, Blois, supported by French king, and Montfort, supported by English king, fought over succession of the Duchy of Brittany after old duke died in 1341. The war finally ended in 1364, after more than 20 years of the death of Charles de Blois in the Battle of Auray. Since the English concentrated their forces mostly in the north of Flanders or in the south of Gascony, Brittany was almost always an affected show side and wasn't allowed to become too much financial grave. The troops were therefore largely left to themselves. Very often groups composed of only a few dozen warriors seized castle or another 45 places most commonly during night raids. Then they extorted protection money, so-called party, in the controlled area and the two raids into the enemy's land. Both sides constantly employed a good number of foreign mercenaries, German, Flemish, Soyard, Genoese. But all the time, the involved British and Bretons also developed an increasingly mercenary mentality. This kind of war attracted above all adventurers tried to make their fortune as independent subcontractor of the crown. Furthermore, the English used the garrisons as a kind of penal colony, into which convicted criminals were thrown to do military service. Jonathan Sampton, leading expert of a period history, described the scene of the following way. A growing proportion of adventurers and Russians, outlaws, escaped jailbirds, convicted rapists and murderers. They were neither knights nor squires, but worthless fellows, men without loyalty or standards who would not serve a moment longer than their 12 pence a day and 40 marks a year. While everyday life in this dirty little war was determined by men, who from today's perspective would be referred as a bloodthirsty bandit under the leadership of ruthless warlords, the glorification of knightly virtues nevertheless reached new pinnacles. Everyone who could afford weapon capital to a knight and experienced horses wanted to be treated as a man of position and honor, and was always ready to defend his reputation in duel. So here comes our story. In 1531, Jean de Beaumanoir, governor of Britain and supporter of Blois, offered the truce, which was ignored by Sir Robert Bramborough, the captain of Plume, and the supporter of Montfort. Robert de Beaumanoir, Castilian Castle of Rosalie personally went to the castle of Beaumont to tell the enemy about code and the rules of war. As a French noble, and he has plenty to tell in this regard. It appeared there were just a few Englishmen in the castle, but a lot of German and Flemish mercenaries. English historians have spared no effort to demonstrate that their leader, who is sometimes called Richard Bambro of Brembo, was at least English. Everybody wants to be proud. However, since the German Mangrave and Brandenburg Louis V provided mercenaries to Edward III on several occasions during the initial phase of a hundred years war, it is not unlikely that he is sometimes left over from these troops. Taking that into consideration, his mate Brandenburg would have been clear indication that he was not an opera. Richard Bramble laughed at French, calling them naive. De Beaumanoir expressed himself more clearly, calling them scum and dishonorable. And then Richard replied that only his integral sense of nobility and chivalry restrained him from killing. So De Beaumanoir assured mercenary they can meet in fair combat and the guard will point at the right one. They agreed they would fight 30 by 30 men. All participants should be killed or captured. Captured men disengaged from the combat and by parole stand in sight until the knight who captured them is dead. It seems that French had an upper hand regarding the uncensory of our combatants, since they had no problem nominating 9 knights and 21 squires, exclusively Bretons and mostly from the known famous. The situation was completely different for the men of Plumet. Among them, there were almost no well-known nobles to be found. Instead, the group compromised of 
typical mix of foreign mercenaries and English adventurers, the obscure origin who sought their fortune in Britain. According to the Chronicles, adversaries met at the March 26th near the huge oak they grew in the halfway between two castles, Brazil and Germany. Combatants had a heavy armor, shortened spear, sword, axes, maces, and war armors by their choice. The combat had the air of a medieval tournament with spectators, refreshments available for combatants, and the like. The previously agreed two rules for the engagement were reviewed. After they heard mass confessed and received absolution, the two sides each formed a line on foot and attacked in the spawn. Thing is, noblemen accustomed to fight on the horses, while mercenaries were mostly footmen, as they agreed the battle would be on foot English head and upper hand. So, the first part of a battle was successful for English. They killed the Fra de Melon, a Gunfra Pollard, and wounded and captured Sir Calon de Basdega, Sir Jean Rouleau, and Sir Yves Chiruel. They also managed to wound Tristan Pestivien, but he still kept fighting. De Beaumanoir ordered to stop single fights, regrouped his men and tried to make a collective strike. English managed to withstand and repel the attack, but didn't manage to do any conclusion from change of tactics. The fight lasted rather long, but he decided to have a rest and get some food and wine. De Beaumanoir rallied his men. We lost five, but there will be more glory when we are victorious. As the rest was ended and the fight went on, Brembo break through the line range and sent De Beaumont to the ground and demanded to surrender. We don't know if De Beaumont replies him anything, but the other French came to hell. Alain de Caranrai struck Brembo with a spear, either to the face or to the head, and Brembo fell on the ground, and Sir Godfroy de Bois killed him, putting his sword through the gaps in the armor. Therefore, the leader demoralized the Englishmen and distorted their order. Two captured Frenchmen took advantage of the cows and leave their places as captive and joined other Frenchmen, though it was not Brimbo who captured them. This was the first violation for the French side. After the death of Brimbo, Croquat took to the command of English forces, though he was just a squire. He called upon the courage and resilience, but was an example of vigilance and courage himself. After the battle, he was called the best fighter from the English side. MVP of that time. So they fought on. But neither side had advantage, and men overcome the have different views. During that period was the episode which later became legendary. Wounded, exhausted, the Beaumanoir asked to drink one of his men. And the Blois, who heard the plea, cried to his commander, Drink your blood, Beaumanoir, and your first will pass. This was invigorate the commander of Frenchman, and he steps into the fight. But no side could win. Nobody knows how the fight was over if one of the Frenchmen, Guillaume de Montauban, really violated the agreement. All sources agree upon Montauban that ended fleeing from the combat. De Bonnois saw that and cried to him, Where are you going, Sly Squire? Why are you leaving us? And Montauban answered, Do your deeds, De Bonnois, and I will do mine. When he got the place where the horses were tied and rode to the battlefield, it was the rudest violation of the agreement. Montauban rode right into the Englishman's order and sent several of them to the ground. The rest Frenchmen used the chance and turned the defeat into the victim. Nine Englishmen were killed in total, the rest were captured. All captives were taken to the castle of Rasmi. Around Frosar called it as a prime example of noble display of the ideals of chivalry, but he finishes his story with the words, some would find here vigilance and some on the console. Well, as we can see the fight was not very fair. Thing is, French noblemen violated the agreement three times, and three nights later they capture in place when they kill Brembo, which does not look very chivalry to me, and the last episode we from Montapal. Still, as we talked earlier, comparing to the things that were around during the time, it was the most novel and fire fun. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you want to hear more. Thank you very much. Bye bye.